North America's engine was designed in 1839, so it was an early type walking beam engine. With such a long stroke, a reamer is the easiest way to go. This is the steam chest and valve assembly. A single eccentric controls, as you can see here, one set of wipers. So it's the same timing for intake and exhaust puppets. Not the best thing for efficiency. That's why later engines have two sets of wipers. Now back to the cylinder and a few other parts. The piston doesn't seal against the cylinder wall, but the rings do. I make mine from Teflon. It prevents the brass cylinder from wearing out, and they're simple to make. But they have no elasticity. If compressed, they won't seal anymore. That's why I first fit in a Viton ring. It acts as a spring, perfect for a slow revving engine such as this one.
Now let's assemble all this and see how it works. Reversing engine will be radio controlled, so I had to adapt a few things. These piston valves, for example. Real engine have puppet valves. When reversing, steam admission will switch from left side valves to the right ones. The real engine got steam admission through its left side puppets only, and it had no reversing gear. So to reverse, eccentric hook had to be disengaged, and then the puppets were manually opened and closed by moving a long starting bar up and down. Engineers didn't need to go to the gym. This chest assembly was 15 feet tall, 4 meters 50. It's now fixed to the cylinder. This engine was built for a medium-sized steamboat, but it was gigantic. 32 feet from bed plate to walking beam. It was built by James Cunningham at the Phoenix Foundry in New York. He also provided the boilers and the paddle wheels, which had the latest split bucket design. Here I'm installing the actuating mechanism. That's the lifter with one of the toes. It's the crossover lifter. It only came with early engines with the single set of wipers. And here the rock shaft with those wipers. To control the wipers, an eccentric fixed on the crankshaft will have its rod coming along this side and hook on this lever. The wipers push up the valves, return springs will bring them back down. We can now try this with compressed air and see what happens. Some small timing adjustments needed, but otherwise perfect. I'll be making the frame next, but that's for another episode. Thank you for watching.